Hello there! So, another day, another running video. So slightly different route than last time. I'm gonna try and keep my arm up a bit more because yeah, I watched the last running video I did back and it's like, oh, end of the video, it's just a view of my chest. So, whoops. It is a lot colder than you'd expect today, but it is sunny, so that's nice. Um, got a lot to talk about. So yeah, we'll dive into that in a, in a minute or so. Okay, so in regards to Disneyland, the first Disney park to reopen since the lockdown has, and that's Disneyland Shanghai. So, I'm trying to set this up so I can actually breathe. So, they've introduced a lot of different things to try and cope with um, the potential spread of um, the coronavirus so it's good to pay attention to this stuff because it will probably affect Disneyland Paris when they reopen <sighs> so they've they are limiting entry into the park I'm not sure what the number of people is but it's obviously going to be lower than normal there will be temperature screening as you enter the park so obviously feeling a bit a bit warm on the day don't go to the park because they will turn you away um, there will be increased distribution of hand sanitizer and both when entering and exiting rides and a mask must be worn at all times which is starting to become very standard so we can probably expect to see stuff like that at Disneyland Paris when in September I say September because obviously that's when I'll be going hopefully fingers crossed <laughs> Okay, so good news about France, the vote on the 7th, they voted to start de-escalating the lockdown um, and reducing the severity of it. I didn't actually realise this, but apparently to leave your home, you had to actually fill out a written form. So that's, that's something glad we're not doing in the UK. that get annoying fast but at the same time I'm sure it worked 
because if you know you have to fill out a form every time and you have to go out, you're going to want to limit that. Anyway, so can you hear that wind? The orchestra of trees. Anyway, so they're de-escalating the lockdown in France, which is good news. So at the moment, a lot like the UK, there isn't a quarantine for people coming from within the EU and the UK because we, I think we still count for it, but yeah. Anyway, so that's quite good because there was one thing I was reading, it's like obviously coming back to the UK after a holiday, expect 14 days quarantine, but they've said actually that's not the case if you're going to France. And France has likewise said, if you're from the EU or the UK, no quarantine for you. So that's good. Um, so if you're outside the EU, um, then I believe they said they won't be accepting anyone from outside the EU until at the earliest mid-June. It hasn't been confirmed yet. So if you're in America and you signed up for the September Disneyland Paris runs, there is still hope. Just need a, a bit of faith, luck, and a bit of pixie ducks. Pixie ducks? Pixie dust. So, yeah, that's good. That was it. So, in there, de-escalation of the lockdown in France. They've said they will keep monitoring it and obviously if things start getting bad they'll re-escalate it but for the meantime it's de-escalating and they've split the regions of France into red and green zones. So green zones are obviously where it's been doing better and the red zones are the areas that have been and continue to be quite affected. Unfortunately Disneyland Paris does fall in one of those red zones, as I think does Paris itself. So it's unfortunate, but obviously, as they said, I'll keep an eye on it. So we could find it actually isn't that bad. people wondering why I don't talk about the UK lockdown restrictions right now that much. Obviously I mentioned about quarantine excluding France, but I'll be honest, after the big speech last night, this is being filmed on Monday by the way, so this will be airing. You'll be seeing this two days later probably on a Wednesday. I'm not sure what the date is today. I think it's like the 10th or 11th or something. I'll be honest, Boris's newscast the other day was a bit confusing. So I'm avoiding talking about that to confirm more. If anything, I'll go with Angela Merkel's announcement, which was keep doing what you're doing. 
nothing's changed because it's at least a bit more concise and easy to understand. this route the paths are less even than the ones I've been the route I ran in the previous video which is the route I've basically been doing since the lockdown started oh that's not good New. I ran this route on Friday to make sure I didn't get lost or turn around and that wasn't there so that was fun but I'll anyway, get through that's all right this ruined lake it's where the path run would normally end we're obviously doing this in reverse but only for a little bit we're actually going to follow the mini train tracks which you can see just along the ground there before crossing train tracks. Look both ways, he says. Gets to the second set and forgets. <laughs> So you can see, this is not somewhere we've run together before. That's fine. I know my way. Shouldn't be any more diversions, I hope. <laughs> Okay, so I'm running along here, I'm going to take it a little bit slower so I can talk. So, Disney Plus, what have I been watching this week? Well, I started watching the Mighty Ducks films, not the animated series, finished that in like week one of Disney Plus, but yeah, I've never seen the Mighty Ducks films before, which it's all those things, you see it advertised everywhere 
or you did in like the 90s. I know, I remember Disney did like a clip show of their films that used to, I think it was on ITV, but used to get clips from the films, obviously to try and raise interest in buying them or going to see them. And the clip I actually remember from being a kid, from that was from Mighty Ducks 2, which I've just started. But yeah, it's actually quite good. Quite enjoying it. Yeah, I'll be interested to see what the third film's like. Because I think anyone watching this, obviously the film, or at least the first film, second film, maybe a little bit less, but it's all about Bombay, um, who I think is played by Emilio Estevez. I may be mispronouncing that, I apologize if I am. I think this is our route, yep. Yeah. Those clouds do not look nice. Thankfully the light's still behind us. Praise the sun. So yeah, really enjoyed the first Mighty Ducks. Feels like a very 90s film. And I don't know what the quality is, but something about the editing, obviously the camera's used. Oh, there's a cat. Happy you'll appreciate that. Anyway, still there? Yep. Oh, here's somewhere my parents will recognise. So, just behind these trees. Is the barge. Which I'm sure when the lockdown is lifted, go and visit but it's not so we won't just yet now if I remember correctly I remember hearing they were going to do a Mighty Ducks live action TV series for Disney Plus it may be on hold right now because of the lockdowns but I'm kind of wondering what they'll do with it because I, I remember someone saying oh maybe it'll be about the hawks and they'll now be in the kind of position that the ducks were in and it'll be like a flip on it but that seems a bit too contri contrived or well, probably it's already been done because you've got that with Cobra Kai right now which obviously is a a sequel series to the Karate Kid on YouTube and obviously they want a very similar idea Cobra Kai's kind of you know become not a joke but it's just kind of dysfunctional it's nowhere near where it was in the original film and I haven't seen Karate Kid so I don't know the names but the guy who fights the Karate Kid in the first film um, ends up restarting it because he meets someone who's a bit who can't defend themselves. And he's like, right, train with me and you'll be able to defend yourself. And then the series kind of goes into the rivalry between him and the Karate Kid from the original film, who was also running a, a dojo, I think. But yeah, so, oh, it's starting to rain.
Okay, I've watched enough. Tom's the tank engine, as a kid to know, water is nothing to an engine with determination, so I'm gonna push through this. But I'm wearing glasses as well, so it's not gonna get in my eyes. But yeah, so my duck's been good. I'll admit, I still need to watch the, the prop show, um, which makes me feel guilty because I saw it post on Twitter and I was like, go watch that tonight. Of course, tonight rolls around and I got distracted. So I will get around to watching that, if just for the Tron episode. Let me some Tron. I won't torment Ben in this video. unfortunate news so last video it was May the 4th and I said well, after a bit of trouble I managed to get the Star Wars pin unfortunately um, got an email at the weekend saying it was cancelled according to the pin group sounds like basically anyone who didn't get it at 8 o'clock in the morning isn't getting it so that's a, a shame sounds like I still get the key though which is almost as important because those, as I said, it'll go nice with my regular key, which I've got, which I use as a Christmas decoration. But those keys, seriously sought after. When you look on eBay and stuff, some of them sell for like 50 quid. And it's like, I'm not gonna sell it, but damn. So, anything on else on Disney Plus I've been watching? I started watching Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes again, because if you're looking for an Avengers cartoon, that's the one. Don't worry about Avengers Assemble, or Secret Wars, or whatever it's calling itself these days. You want Earth's Mightiest Heroes. The reason why Earth's Mightiest Heroes came out at a bit of an awkward point between the film coming out and obviously plans for the greater MCU so the series is really good and the inspiration for it is from the comics so it's a really good series they've done it really well they've modernized it while also keeping elements true like the fact that Captain America wasn't on the original team of Avengers it was actually Hulk and then Hulk left after feeling betrayed and then that's when Cap came in so that happens in the series it's different to how it was in the original comic of course but the fact is still there the fact is true and Ant-Man and Wasp are founding members again now obviously as the MCU was kicking off they wanted to change the image because you want a kind of unified image going forward and yeah let's go run for a minute and I'll catch my breath okay so as I was saying Wasp and Ant-Man founding members again of the Avengers and Obviously, Disney wanted to change things going forward. So, unfortunately, Earth's Mightiest Heroes got cancelled. I think they were about halfway through their second season and they had to wrap it up quick. So, fair play. Unlike some series which can end on a cliffhanger, Chan Uprising, uh, you know, they got some notice. But uh, the problem was, 
they were setting up for some quite big storylines. They just, they had to actually rush the conclusion of Secret Invasion and Swapping Hands up on side. So yeah, they had to rush the conclusion of Secret Invasion to halfway through the second season. And there were plot threats being laid for Civil War, which probably would have been their third season storyline. And then you have to combine that with the fact that Earth's Mightiest Heroes takes place in the same animated universe as Spectacular Spider-Man and Wolverine and the X-Men. Which, I know everyone's thinking, but it's not 90s X-Men. Fair play. But Wolverine and the X-Men was great. They gave some really nice characterization in that. It's like Cyclops not being the leader and kind of getting to the point of being like a, um, you know, an alcoholic at the start of the series it was a really nice twist. So obviously everyone sees Scott and thinks, Boy Scout. And then, yeah, this series rolls around and it's like, cool. So he's a depressed alcoholic or implied alcoholic and he's not leading the team. And at least one episode, he actually goes rogue and goes off on his own mission. So, yeah. Also has one of my favorite Nightcrawler scenes in any media. And that's, there is an episode where Nightcrawler effectively teleports across the ocean, but he can only do it in a line of sight. So he has to do it jump by jump, which, yeah. That's impressive. So, Earth's Mightiest Heroes takes place in the same universe as Wolverine and the X-Men and Spectacular Spider-Man. Unfortunately, because of Disney's brand unification, that means that despite the fact they did get the voice actor for Spider-Man from a Spectacular Spider-Man to voice him for his episodes, in the second series of Earth's Mightiest Heroes, they actually redubbed up, re over him with the voice actor from Ultimate Spider-Man, which wasn't as good, if, if you ask me. The problem is when Disney took over and did their brand unification, they, they kind of dumbed it all down. And that's fair enough, they obviously wanted to appeal to a younger audience, but I love a good overarching story. Yes, I'm a 28 year old man. Why am I watching kids cartoons? But it's what I enjoy. I mean, you can ask the same thing about kids watching horror films. It's like, you're not old enough to be watching that. Or you're not meant to be. Why are you enjoying it? Because it's cool is probably what they'll say. So, Earth's Mightiest Heroes is part of a larger continuity. And actually saying that, one more part of it, the Hulk versus films are technically in that continuity as well. Because Wolverine, or Hulk versus Wolverine, is actually a prequel to Wolverine and the X-Men and Hulk's appearance in that. So, there you go. So, yeah, Earth's Mightiest Hero got wrapped up quick in favor of Avengers Assemble. Avengers Assemble, the first episode, is very cheeky because they loosely allude to Earth's Mightiest Heroes. You have the Avengers Mansion and that gets blown up at the start of the episode. And then by the end of the episode, it's like, hey, look, that place we barely knew was destroyed, but look at our new digs in Stark Tower which is now Avengers Tower. And obviously that's tying in, in closer to the films. So 
Avengers Assembled, or Avengers Assemble, the cartoon, if you watch without watching Earth's Mightiest Heroes, looks to be a continuation of the films, rather than the cartoon Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Avengers Assemble got a lot more series. I think they got three or four. But obviously that's been cancelled now because again it will be branching outside their their purview. Because they've done stuff now with Ultron, with Thanos, and of course nothing like the films. So yeah. Sun's out again. Hooray! I think my other problem with Avengers Sun was, as I said, they did dumb it down for a younger audience. Problem is, there are points where it is just like sheer out infantile. I mean, they introduced Falcon in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, which is the other reason you can say that it's not connected to the EMH or Earth's Mightiest Heroes for a long, long winded version. So, Falcon appears in that, and he's voiced by Lance Reddick, and he's a much more shadowy character. Because again, I think this was before Winter Soldier came out. But, yeah. So, of course in Avengers Assemble, he's the rookie on the team. So, and he, basically acts as like a second Tony Stark. He's a tech genius. Which is fine. But then you get episodes like, and I only vaguely remember this. I'm sure people will know the plot a lot better. I didn't pay that much attention, but there's one where like everything's going wrong and he's freaking out because his mum's coming over to bring cookies. And it's like, so we went from Lance Reddick voicing Falcon as a kind of, you know, badass type character. And then we went to this kind of infantile Falcon. And again, I've got no problems because I know I'm not the target audience. But EMH was good. I really liked it. It was suitable for all ages. And the assemble felt like it was trying to kind of like, you know, the adults have the films, kids have the films too, but we can also give them a cartoon to sell merchandise. Hands drooping again. Don't use that arm. Whoop. Anyway, I think this just turned into a long diatribe about Avengers Assemble and Earth's Mightiest Heroes, but yeah, recommendation, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Watch Assemble, Avengers Assemble if you want, but watch EMH first. Because it's technically, Assemble is technically a continuation, technically it's not, but whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna ring off here. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you really enjoyed it, consider subscribing. I saw a few of you did. That was very much appreciated. So yeah, until next time, keep on running.